everyone said horror films were dead. <laughs> People don't like them anymore, don't want to see them. In the early 80s, I started a company called Palace with my partner Nick Powell. We were all in our early 20s, we are all film nuts. We all worked 24 hours a day, none of us ever really cared about anything but movies. It was very, very early days of video. And Nick asked me, he was ex-Virgin, I used to be a partner of Richard Branson, if I would be interested in starting a label based on the kind of movies I showed in my cinema. I ran and owned a cinema called the Scarlet Cinema in King's Cross. It was a repertory cinema, we changed the program every day. We showed movies like A Razor Head, we showed films like the John Waters films, we showed Fassbinder movies, we showed Cocteau films, Kurosawa films, and strange movies. Those kind of movies weren't really being distributed on video, so Nick asked me to go to festivals and see what's around, see what you like to put on the label. So I picked up John Waters' catalogue, I bought Mephisto, I bought Fitzcarraldo. But unfortunately, we realised that the kind of audience that was there for videos in those days, in the early 80s, was really not very sophisticated. People were selling videos in those days. Were, people were buying them from, from garage, from gas stations, from all sorts of like dingy places, real under-the-counter kind of places. So, but what they were selling was what they called video nasties, horror movies. So I started looking at a lot of this stuff in, in LA. It was called Book of the Dead, and that was its first screenings in, uh, in Michigan, were as Book of the Dead. They came out to Hollywood and tried to sell it to studios out here. In most cases, they couldn't even get people to look at it. New Line made them an offer, but the offer wasn't very good. No money up front at all, and worldwide rights in perpetuity. <laughs> yes. First saw The Evil Dead at uh, a thing called the American Film Market, which happens in Los Angeles once a year where American independent filmmakers try to find distributors for their films. AFM, they showed trash. I mean, in the early days, it was really trash. It was garage band kind of movies. It was real gonzo films. Stuff that really mainly was seen by people at home on their own while they're sharpening their chainsaws. It was my first visit there with my partner, Stephen Woolley, and he had seen it and came back to, to tell me very excitedly that he'd seen this terrific horror picture that had like all the elements and was bloodier than anything he'd ever seen before. And I watched the picture and first I was quite startled at the graphicness of the violence. It was a little scary, it was like, oh my god, that you know, really was sort of hitting these ghouls with iron bars. But then after the ghouls were being hit continuously for a few times, a few times more gratuitously and more uh, uh, grotesquely than normal, you began to see the humour of it. I was also struck by how superbly well filmed it was. Especially the uh, camera work and especially the editing. And the sound effects. There's a beautiful shot that goes across the rafters. And as it passes the two rafters, for no reason whatsoever, it makes a noise. So it goes across these rafters and it goes wah, wah, wah. That's absurd. It's a sound. It's making the sound of a camera passing an object. <coughs> I rushed out to buy it and was confronted by this old guy called Irving Shapiro. He had been in film distribution since the 1920s. Among the films he distributed over here were Nanook of the North and The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. He had actually sold Battleship Potemkin in the 30s. This guy was a really old guy. And he looked at their picture and said, you know, boys, it isn't gone with the wind, but I think I can make you a little money. The first thing he had them do was to change the title from Book of the Dead to The Evil Dead. And he was quite taken by my knowledge of cinema, my knowledge of films, and the fact that I was respecting The Evil Dead as a piece of filmmaking and not as a, as a piece of schlock. <laughs> he named a price. I went to Nick and said, OK, I want us to buy this horror film, The Evil Dead. Nick went to see it and was duly horrified. It made me jump. <laughs> it made me laugh. It frightened me in so far as a 30-year-old adult can be frightened by a film. You know, Upward Chainsaw Massacre, but had a sense of humour and had great camera work. I mean, it was great. And, 
met the director who was like three years old and was a wonderkind of this, that and the other sort, who was Sam Raimi. And I was very young, I started that company, I started Paris, I was 24 or something, 25. And this guy was younger than me. I, I, I was unheard of that there were supposed to be somebody younger than me making a film which I thought was made in such a professional way. I think he was in, he was 22 or 23. And he called me Sir, which was kind of slightly irritating as well. I have to say, you know, I don't like being called Sir, but he insisted on calling me Sir and insisted on being incredibly polite, not sweary, show offy. You know, you'd have expected some video buck to be have, have made the film with, with full of, of confidence and vigour and aggression and not at all. Sam was very sweet in a kind of disarming manner. I mean, you really could take him home to your mother. I mean, he was, he was the loveliest man. And when we met Sam Raimi, the director, and Bob Tappert, the producer, uh, you know, we realised also we had in them people who would be great to promote this film. The other most influential person in getting Evil Dead known was in fact Stephen King. King met Sam at first thinking he was a busboy and uh, then saw the film and King says I blew him out of the back of the theater. We had a very specific idea about the the kind of campaign we had. I used a boy, a guy, Graham, never done a campaign in his life, a horror film, sent me some things just as a, you know, off the top, I'm at art school, here are some drawings. And he did some drawings of old horror movies that were done in a particular style. And it was a terrific poster, and Graham's first poster, you know, this kid has never done a poster in his life. That was the kind of decision we were making on The Evil Dead. It, was, it wasn't just the film itself, it wasn't us cashing in on a movie that we could do a few videos on. It actually established what Palace became. <laughs> then we did something really audacious. We released the film theatrically, in cinemas, and on video at the same time. This was unheard of. I think the first and indeed the last time this has ever been done. And uh, we were a bit naughty because we didn't really tell either side that we were doing that. The uh, rank circuit who realised we got away with this trick went completely balmy, went completely nuts. <laughs> we figured that at that point the cinema audience the video audience were so different and separate that, that, that we could hit both at the same time. Evil Dead was massive on video. It was the biggest renting video according to some of the magazines that particular year. It was the biggest video hit of its time, of its year. I think it sold 50,000 copies in one year, which it sold through, which was I think between 40 and 50 pounds at the time. And the theatrical was also successful, but uh, not to the same extent, but still for a horror movie, an independent horror movie that, that cost, you know, 10 cents, it was a massive success. If it became a, a, a landmark film in terms of people realising that video was here to stay and was a big deal. <laughs> it became a landmark film for censorship, because as well as being uh, an incredibly successful film, it became a very controversial film. The first uh, thing I recall hearing was various shops calling up our people and reporting that they had received notices of one sort or another from the public prosecutor's office. And certainly a lot of dealers and wholesalers were being raided. Um, it, it appeared on the list with another 10 video nasties. And we got swooped up with a bunch of other video nasties, including titles like The Burning, Driller Killer, SS Gestapo, I mean, titles that were pretty, um, pretty much more out there than The Evil Dead was. Unlike some of the other movies that have been labelled video nasties. You know, this was clearly a fantasy film. You know, the undead and uh, uh, and weird-looking incarnations, and therefore, in a way, not nasty. <coughs> but I've never been a believer in censorship for anybody who is of age. I'm not very pro-censorship. <laughs> After we lost some of the early cases in small villages because we just weren't able to respond to them quick enough, put our defence together and get out there. Nick um, really put himself on the line by testifying for the film. We went to this strange court in somewhere in East London for this test case. I took one look at the jury and I thought, we're going to win this because they were clearly 
ordinary, as you would expect a jury to be, you know, ordinary, straightforward, working people. Those kind of people believe that they should select their own entertainment uh, as adults. This, what happened was that, uh, first of all, it was clear the jury hadn't seen the film, so arrangements were made to show them the film. God knows what they thought. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sam had to fly to England to testify without any sleep. He arrived in England, took a train up north wherever they were having the trial, sat in the courtroom, and the lawyer said, well, the director is here. Uh, he can say a few words. And the judge said, we don't need to hear from the director. So Sam got back in the train and came, <laughs> came back in the plane and came back to the States without ever having testified. Well, so the, the judge, um, you know, summoned us over and said, he had watched the film and he didn't think there was a case for us to answer. Video, as I say, boomed so big so quickly that when it was this sort of annoying little thing, what, you know, sort of like, you know, it was just like, oh, it will go away. Oh, it's just, it doesn't matter. Who cares? It's just a bunch of perverts. And suddenly when Evil Dead hit so big, and suddenly the cinema chain's going, whoa, what's happening here? How many units of that have they sold of that? But this is a respectable film we're showing in our cinemas. This is crazy. We've got to protect our industry. We can't let these little guys make money. And, you know, when Star Wars and all the other movies being released on video, and suddenly the majors are seeing they're making money, it was kind of a slight suppression of the, of the um, independence. So on one hand, it was partly a censorship thing, but I think more importantly, it was how the majors wrested control again. OK, let's arrest some of them. Let's, 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 get, them, let's get them banged up. What happened was they introduced the Video Recordings Act. A lot of smaller companies got whacked, you know, into the ground because of that video nasties bill. And it took some time before the Evil Dead was given a video certificate under the new act. After the success of the Evil Dead, we had a we had always had as a company policy uh, an attitude towards filmmakers. We wanted to encourage filmmakers to feel that we were part of their family and they were part of ours. So we, we, all, we wanted Sam's next films. I mean, you know, that was it. We, we, we was a big success with Evil Dead 1. You know, we wanted Evil Dead 2 not simply to court controversy, but because we saw him as a filmmaker and part of our family. He's gone on to make some fantastic films since, of which Simple Plan is just fantastic, Sam. I just thought I'd let you know that in case you see this. <laughs>